Tubals in a China Shop is brought to you by these great companies that are giving us money to let you listen to their stuff. Bullshit, Kyle. We make this show. We make this show. You and me. Tubals in a China Shop is brought to you by us. <laughs> Someone's got to pay the bills, Dan, because it's not our trading. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll them. You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hats on your face. Well, hello and welcome, everyone. Welcome to the China Shop. You made it for another exciting guest interview. I'm Shopkeeper Dan. With me, as always, is Kyle, creator of FinancialNipsuit.com. Kyle, how are you doing today? Better than you are. (laughs) That's right. That's right. I'm iced up post-vasectomy, so I might might be a little confused at times, but that's okay. I'm, I'm here to, I'm in it to win it here in the shop. Didn't even take a day off. It's impressive. Right. That's good. I used all my vacation days going camping two weeks yeah. ago. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our guest today? Our guest. We are joined by Shlomo Freund, financial coach and author. How are you doing today, Shlomo? Hello. I'm great. Thank you for having me. And you're coming to us from Israel. Is that correct? I'm now in Israel. We can talk about the digital nomad and where I'm at in the world. But for now, I'm in Israel. <laughs> Is that your, your normal base camp or uh, just it's, where you decided to go recently? No, no, it's the base. It's the base, but uh, uh, we, we travel a lot. Let's say this. Mm. I may ask you some questions about Israel uh, later on in the show. But first, why don't we uh, kind of jump in? Like, Tell us how you got in, involved in like the investing world. Like, What was your journey like? Ooh, um, so I've been a financial geek, I think, from a young age. Like, um, I I remember having a little yellow post-it note uh, where I've learned that when I read the newspaper every day, there is the exchange rate of Israeli shekels and, and U.S. dollars. Mm-hmm. And I had these two shekels that I exchanged for whatever dollars that was amount at that time. And every day I went to my parents and I said, if I decided to exchange that back to the other currency or not. So that was my first tradings. How old were you? I Probably around 10, maybe even oh, that's less. That's pretty impressive. I, I think since then I'm reading the financial part of the newspaper first. Well, no newspaper now, but uh, throughout the years. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is how I started, I guess. Wow. That's the first experience. Started with Forex at 10 years old. That's Yeah, that's... <laughs> <not bad. laughs> Maybe I still have that uh, that little post-it somewhere. I need to go, go look for it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> is that the is that the actual Israel currency? Is it shekels? Yes, Israeli shekels. Like I always hear that, uh, like like the old Jewish guy in movies talking about shekels. I didn't know that it was the actual currency. I thought that was like their slang for money. It's actually the all an old uh, the old currency also from the biblical times. So you see that same name. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so, but but there were other names up to I think end of the seventies, and then they began with shekel and new shekel, and now it's new shekel. So you started at ten. When did you uh, start getting into like the stock market? Then, like actually looking at an adult. <laughs> <laughs> um, at around uh, two thousand and uh, five, six, something like that. Okay, right before the crash. Not right, right before, but uh, somewhat <laughs> before. Uh, I took a, a a course about trading stocks and trading options and investing in real estate. At the time, um, I remember I had a very small portfolio and I had my handshaking whenever I need to click buy and deciding on a new stock. And I wasn't sure I'm doing the right thing. Handshake, you mean like, like nervousness? Not handshake. My hand shaking. Yeah, like nervousness. Oh, oh, oh yes, exactly. gotcha. Okay. It's like, who's coming over yeah. and shaking your hand to say trade confirmed? <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that makes much more sense. The owners of the companies always come to me, shake their hand, then I buy them. Yes. Right, That's right. How it works. <laughs> that, you sound like the guy that I'd be copying trades if that was the case. <laughs> it sounds more like Warren Buffett's. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, did you go to school for any of this stuff too? Then so you said you found a course. Like, was, was that like uh, through through university, or is that just something you found on your own? I, something I found on my own. So uh, there were uh, these uh, uh, cash flow clubs uh, back in the days. 
Uh, I don't know if they still exist around the world. So uh, Robert Kawasaki has this cash flow one-on-one game. And then it started the old probably a uh, franchise of those clubs. Mm-hmm. So there was one in Israel and they offer these courses. So I joined one of those. Uh, what, what do they teach you? General things about the market. So, you know, uh, you don't know what you don't know when you start. Mm, right. uh, so, so yeah. So what is the stock? How you evaluate that? I don't remember it was anything special in particular. Do they go into like any like fundamental analysis or technical analysis or anything like that? Or is it more just like the basics of how to make a trade? It it was a a little bit of the technical and a little bit of the fundamental, but not something you can really... I mean, I wasn't an expert at trading after this. (laughs) You knew enough to be dangerous at that point. (laughs) I was more of like, okay, now I know how to do that. Uh, It's time to jump into the water and do that. Um, and this is how you gain experience. I was curious, like for people who are overseas, like which markets do they typically tend to trade? Like when you when you first mm. dipped your toes in or first started out, like were you trading the U.S. equities or were you trading on the, uh, the local Israeli ones? No, the local one. Um, I think since then Israel changed a lot, and uh, people are now looking more in overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, however, there is always a tight connection and how Israel sees the U.S. market and things like that. So this is the first market we're looking at, although Europe is closer. So there's a tight connection there, and then Europe is next. Oh, so you can actually like look and see how the SPY did the day before and kind of be able to extrapolate that into yeah. what Israel? Sometimes. I don't, I don't do uh, short-term tradings. I do value investing, so I, I'm not looking at those things. But uh, generally speaking, you're right. I mean, there are there will be people who are trading this way. Yeah. So what sort of things do you look for in the, the stocks that you like to pick for your investments? So here's the thing. I basically um, decided that I'm going to kind of outsource this. Okay. Because I found someone I trust who has a program that does value investing and doing very well uh, for the past 17-ish or so years. Uh, so I'm basically trusting um, what he's doing with his portfolio. And then through that membership, I do what he does. Mm. Um, so that's so there aren't tons of tradings, okay? Uh, there are maybe uh, every month or two or three, uh, depends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's mainly trading at the U.S. stock market and uh, and a little bit... A little bit in Israel. Mm-hmm. Uh, is he, does he do good enough to warrant a shout out? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, 23% on average a year Woo! for the past 17 years. What's the guy's name? What's the guy's name? Inon Arieli. Inon. Is he, does he have like a website? Does he take clients? Like, yes. We yes. The- He's even have a, 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 an English one. Uh, I'll find it while we talk. Uh, so, okay. So it makes sense that you would need somebody to do the money managing for you based on the lifestyle choices that you've, uh, decided to pursue. Uh, you described, you were described as a digital nomad in the, um, the, the pitch that was sent to us. What does yep. that mean? So we are location independent family. So for the past seven years or so, uh, both me and my wife work remotely. Mm-hmm. So we don't go to the office. Uh, we also basically having everything we need with a one kilo computer. So it doesn't really matter if we are on our base in Israel or traveling. Mm-hmm. So once, sometimes twice a year, we go for a trip for, we call it workation for like two, three months somewhere in the world. Uh, we go there with our kids. We homeschool them. And that works for us. That sounds very interesting. Yeah. Uh, are there are there places that you like to return to, or is it someplace new every time? Uh, so there is a balance, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> uh, because there weren't, of course, new places, but there are also places that we came, that we returned to, like Portugal. Yeah. But there were always reasons for, for different, different things. So my wife used to work for our uh, remote first company. And they are, they have these, they had these retreats. Mm -hmm. So we had a reason instead of just staying for a week, at least uh, one flight ticket is paid. We're just going to stay for two months. Uh, So, (laughs) so that's some of those places we just came because it was 
convenient to just stay or just go to a close by place. I'm kind of curious though. How do you how do you get um, like accommodations for the time that you're out there? Because like hotels are expensive and hostels are probably a little bit too bare bones. Um, so it's not that hard, must say. Um, usually you do. Uh, we do uh, either booking or Airbnb or if there are or local agents sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not it's not that complicated um also we whenever we live uh, leave israel then we rent out our place okay i was going to ask about that so so that's also uh, very helpful Uh, israel is an expensive place it covers a a substantial amount of traveling um when you uh not always but uh, it's still a nice sum what about the time zones doesn't that Screw you up your like your work schedule. Like if you go too far away, then you're up in the middle of the night Where? working. From 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 who? Oh well, you said you work remotely, but I guess it doesn't necessarily mean you have set hours, then, right? No set hours. Okay, okay, that makes it a little better. So my clients are all around the world. Um, my wife's company are also all around the world. So basically, it's uh, everything is asynchronous mm-hmm. communication most of it sometimes there are meetings uh, but everything is through a uh, slack channel i have a in my business i have a, a virtual assistant in the philippines and i fully communicate over slack and the screencast and uh, from time to time we also have a call but not that many and what are you doing so right now then um i assume uh the the talking about the free financial self website here yeah, so uh, I'm a financial coach for remote workers, mm-hmm. um, helping people basically align their lifestyle goals with their finances. So helping them understand what they want for themselves, and then reverse engineer how much uh, what they need to do today to save and invest, and in what asset to help them reach all those life goals. Basically, so kind of like a financial planner and. Yes, but I, I, it's not so much about the. It's not only about the the planning. Planning is only the numbers. It's also about having the good, flexible lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So people, uh, it's not only about uh, oh, we want to buy a house. Okay. Or it, it's or we want money for retirement. It's also uh, I want to travel every two years. Uh, I want to have a, a, a speedboat. Um, I want to see my, uh, it's also, uh, regular examples. Like, uh, I want to help my, my kids with college. That's okay too, mm-hmm. but it's a blend of all those. So everything comes in, in there and it's not kind of the regular, let's say lifestyle that people are thinking of. Mm-hmm. And I was going to say, and you do one-on-one mentoring with people too. So I do, most of my clients now are on one-on-one different, uh, lengths of programs, uh, because it's it's money we're talking about here, and it's very individual. Uh, however, I also now working on several collaborations, so it will be kind of a cohort base, and I also have an online course. <laughs> cohort, that's a good word. You don't hear that very often. You don't hear that? I hear it a lot. Probably just in my world, then. Oh uh, well, I mean, cohort? like old spy movies. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have people on a monthly coaching group, yep. so that so that is not a cohort, but a cohort is more of like a, you know six seven six seven meetings uh, online, right? With yeah, things like that. Gotcha. Uh, and I was about to mention also that I do niche website investing, so I oh. flip websites. I um, basically just like you are improving real estate and then sell it. Mm-hmm. So you can do that to websites as well. So that's also kind of an investment. Uh, we never really talked about that. You know, all the different investment vehicles we talked about. So are, are you talking about like buying like domain names and then like holding them and selling them to people who want them? Or are you talking more about like fixing them? I'm talking, no, and neither. I'm talking about uh, websites, usually content websites that already have cash flow. Oh, okay. Uh, websites. And then basically you add more uh, monetization channels, uh, you diversify traffic, uh, you add, you, you write content, you, uh, I don't know, uh, 
negotiate uh, affiliate fees. There are many, many ways that you can grow a website, but you need to find the good ones. And then if everything makes sense, you buy it, uh, then you work on it. Tell me more about how to improve your website. I'm asking for a friend here. <laughs> yeah. For a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you go- are you asking about? Uh, well, I I can't follow who's speaking every time, but were you just asking about Kyle and Kyle just asking about Dan? No, I was asking about our website. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have one. <laughs> we have one for the podcast. Uh, it depends on the traffic. It depends where it comes from. Uh, um, if you want to go more into details on this afterwards for like, you want me to look into this, uh, I'm glad to, you know, of Ahrefs. So it, it's a, a kind of a, a, um, a platform to see how well websites are doing. Uh, no, what is it? You see the links, you see how strong the website is. You see the keywords. I can see all of that. Uh, I can't share it here because, um, well, we're not video or anything and I'm not going to share my screen on this, but we can do it afterwards. I'd be <laughs> curious to see how we're doing. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So uh, nope. I've been browsing around through your website. I noticed that you post your monthly network net worth reports. Uh, I'm just kind of curious why yeah. you decided to do that. Why Why are you putting yourself out there like that? So basically, I'm. I have nothing to. I, I have. I feel like I have nothing to hide, mm-hmm. and I don't mind. Um, it's kind of a way showing people how track and manage their money uh, and I and how to diversify their investments to reach their whatever lifestyle they want for themselves so it's a way to it's a way to build their ideal lifestyle and show them how mm-hmm. I'm trying to get one to load up here I want to see what uh... oh last two months were bad but the world was not great then. <laughs> markets have been cranky the last few months that's for sure but uh, almost every time that I write that things are down, like, yes, but I'm for the long term, so I'm not worried. And I'm indeed not worried. So that's fine. Remember that guy doing yeah. 23% a year over 17 years? I'm not worried. That's why I was wondering why you look at it monthly in that case. People can track. People can see. Again, have nothing to hide. I see that yeah. you have crypto holdings. Um, yes, I do. How do you feel about the, the crypto environment right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does get better. Uh, I admit, well, I also wrote about this, that I, I took, so there is this platform I mentioned called Nexo, which pays for, uh, ba- basically pays you interest rate for, for, uh, your crypto. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I moved away my Bitcoin from that platform, uh, because about two, no, two, three months ago, there was an, another network doing the same business model called Celsius. Oh, yep. And. They got bankrupt, uh, so I was kind of wasn't yeah. sure where Nexo is going. So I took most of it out. Um, things are back up again, but you know when people ask me about Bitcoin uh, and if this is an investment, mm-hmm. I'm kind of it's a either you call it a very volatile investment or it's not an investment. Right. It's kind of just it's there. It's nice to have. It's growing. It's growing great. But if something happens to this, you know. Uh, it will it will hurt, but it won't change my lifestyle, and it's kind of okay. I tried. When when did you get started in in crypto? So I actually uh, about twenty fourteen. I got the first payment with Bitcoin hmm. from someone uh, for a service that my company gave. Um, and back then, crypto. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin, not crypto. Uh, was it around um, 1,000, uh, 1,300? Mm-hmm. But since then, uh, I got rid of that uh, Bitcoin that I had and got back into it, I think, about four years ago, five years ago. Is it just Bitcoin or do you invest in any of the other ones? So now I have Bitcoin and Ethereum, but most of it is Bitcoin. So so you're not sweating this fall at all? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. It, it works. It's not my only thing. Did I miss a really? Uh, did I miss the joke? Oh, the joke is you—you you got in before it was at twenty thousand, right. so I, you're, st- you're still up from your entry. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm okay. I'm really okay. Yes. Before Matt Damon, I don't know. Did you guys have those commercials over in Israel? Uh, the Matt Damon fortune no. favors the bold. No. Okay. I don't have. No, I don't know that one. 
Yeah, right right before this most recent sell-off, he came out in like all the movie theaters and online, these commercials saying, yeah. get into crypto, fortune favors the bulls. Serious? Yeah, and then it just <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have crypto? Um, we've got Skydolls, and then I have some other like very small holdings of like Ethereum. No, it's like not even it's not even like a tenth of a percent of my portfolio. I heard everything about uh, about crypto people. I mean, I heard people saying uh, Bitcoin is good, uh, Ethereum is bad, and the other way around, or just don't go into this at all. So there's like it's all over the mm-hmm. place. It's kind of hard to really you know get an informative uh, to have an informative decision on this. It's kind of again whatever happens happens. There's like two schools of thought. Like you can either invest with like the big boys, like the two that are probably more likely to see mainstream adoption. Uh, and that's Bitcoin and Ethereum, or you try to get right. in at the ground zero of like a new, uh, pardon the French, but shitcoin. Oh, I don't do shitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> we get some free ones. So we were, uh, after talking to the guy who created Skydles, so we've been following that one, but I, I, I don't know how to sell it. So we're kind of stuck yeah, in that right. one. <laughs> You can just hold. You can just take your bits from your computer and carry them somewhere and give it to right, someone. Right. Of course, that, you do that. <laughs> yeah, right. It feels like sometimes. Here's some ones and zeros. Enjoy. <laughs> yes, and then you're probably going to get some lettuce for it. I guess <laughs> not money. <laughs> <laughs> some literal lettuce. I don't understand the people that use their cryptocurrencies as spending currencies. Like that, just I, I don't right. get that. Like, I wouldn't right. cash in my like you know stock at Activision to go pay for my rent for the month. I see ads of uh, for accepting uh, Bitcoin for service providers, and actually was considering this. And the other day, I asked on my Twitter account, "Does that matter to anyone?" And the reactions I got are like, mm, "No, not really." Yeah, does it- so it wouldn't make someone mm. come to me just because he can pay with Bitcoin now. Right. I I can't imagine. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make sense for now. Plus, and then uh, like I don't know, the people getting paid in Bitcoin too. Like that's that would scare me as well. I'd hate like between the time I got my check and the time I went to cash it, <laughs> the chances are that it could drop. You know, ten percent or go up. It could go up too. But so I'm not going to gamble on my paycheck. <laughs> well, all people, not all people, but many people are are, are all on Web three space. Sometimes they're paid on their they let's call it local coin of the company and then they cash probably some of it or all of it oh. uh, at the payday okay that makes sense that that happens yeah as long as it's traded right of course <laughs> or you get the lettuce or you get the lettuce part yeah that's that's where i'm stuck at i probably get a lot of lettuce though <laughs> <laughs> so do you spend most of your time uh as an as an advisor on calls with individuals like working with people to get their finances straight finances straight so half of my time I spend with my kids homeschooling. So we, we have a schedule of half time and half time. And how are their finances? Wonderful. <laughs> my my six year old already for two years has her allowance, and we teach her about finances. So her she's she's doing good. Has she started trading shekels for dollars before you, or is, <laughs> right. or did you put her right. to a safer asset? <laughs> So a few months ago, I asked her if she wants to get her allowance for the month or if she wants to get more next month and keep it with me. Oh, teaching her about delayed gratification. And uh, and interest. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, is she doing better? Do I offer more than that guy or not? Uh, let me think. Mm. <laughs> Instead of 20, 25. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm giving a good rate. That's uh, 25% for a month. Yes. That's a good one. Ah, yeah, that's a no-brainer. All right, can I give you some of my money? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it, but the investment size is limited to uh, five dollars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I also see here that you've written some books. Uh, um, you want to tell us about uh, the topics of those, or anything that you want to promote here? So I uh, was part of writing a book called the Growth Hacking Book Number Two. It won a uh, world record for having the most uh, uh, the business book with the most writers for the most countries around the world. Oh wow! It's a, I think it's twenty or twenty two uh, countries. Uh, so that was about uh, two years ago. I have some hard copies here. Uh, it's also on Amazon, and uh, it's all about growth hacking. So different authors wrote uh, about how they growth hack, and I wrote about how to growth hack your lifestyle and finances so creating that what what exactly is a growth hack 
Okay, first of all, it's a hype term. Yeah. Let's say this. <laughs> okay, let's put this on the table. However, yeah, yeah. There, it's usually things that people don't think about when they're approaching. So with, with let's say, with uh, website investing, there are always, you know, there are, all, there are ways, let's say, to create lots of pages uh, at a short amount of time and then maybe get ranked for many keywords. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a, a growth hack uh, if you find a way to do that. Because... Usually what happens to a website, you have, you add a post and then another post and then another post. But if you do it at, uh, uh, fast enough and oh. still in a legitimate way, that can work. And this can bring much more traffic to your website because of this. So this is an example of growth hack. Ah, uh, okay. So not like net worth growth. But really, anything it sounds like. Yeah, they they uh, on that book there are examples of of uh, marketing or different tools you can use, things like that. Interesting. For me, um, getting this into uh, finances, it's more of it's more of uh, helping people understand once you set your life goals and what you really want for yourself, mm-hmm. and track everything and know where you are towards that goal, you're getting this clarity and kind of Zen feeling of where you're at in life, where you're heading, also financially speaking. Uh, And I think this is makes you a more balanced and happier person. So that's where the, it's not so much a growth hacking, but kind of being at the right place for yourself. That's an interesting point. Like the, the, getting a better perspective uh, by having your goals. But how many people do you talk to that actually don't know what their life goals are? Almost all of them. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Wow. That sounds surprising, it, it, but it shouldn't be. People are very much into inertia. We're doing what we did. Uh, we are just keep going. We Yes, we've been told that we need to invest. We put the money there. We put the money there. It just keeps going on and on and on. Instead of thinking about their investment as, oh, this money goes to my round the world trip in five years. And if I'll put it at a 10% return, whatever asset that is, if I'll find the right asset, mm-hmm. then I, I, will get, I will get to that goal. Right. And this is something I want for myself. Uh, so this kind of thinking, it's not money for the sake of making money. It's, a money. it's money for the sake of something that you'd want for yourself. It could be saving for the next generations. That's fine too. Right. I'm just saying, just give, give it a title, put it in a bucket and then uh, have a reason for it. And then, and it becomes more fulfilling when you actually make progress towards that goal. Yes, yes, exactly. So, th- so this is the approach I'm I'm working on with my programs. Mm-hmm. It's not only about take money, put it in assets, grow that. What are some of the the weirder goals that you've heard? Can you share that? Weirder goals? Hmm. Like anybody want to self publish a music album or anything like that? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have that. No. I didn't have that. But I have people uh, who wants to uh, have a. A kind of a long trip every year, uh, you know, and rather expensive one. Mm-hmm. So things like that, and and we put this in the plan. So I worked with them on these kind of things. Uh, I had a, I had a boat. I had somebody who wants to uh, build a hostel. Uh, what else I had? Yeah, nothing very extraordinary, mm-hmm. but still, it's important. It's important that these things will be there. Right. At the end of the day, you you find out, and this is also part of what I do is, is you help people understand what they really want and like to do. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day is, you know, spend time with family, spend time with friends, uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, things like that, that don't cost so much money, even if you had billions and billions in the bank. Right. So it's a matter of putting things in perspective. I really like that. I like the idea. Of trying, That's, what's, our, what's your goal, Dan? What, what are we doing everything for? Uh, exactly that. So I can just spend time do you know with friends and loved ones uh also you know i'd love to make a musical like you said make a musical okay <laughs> <laughs> hmm. okay how much did that cost and when do you want to do that then reverse engineer i see i i have produced some small things before so the cost is a sliding scale like it, it depends on, like if i really really want to just do it for the, the sake of doing it i could probably do it for a few thousand dollars but if I want to like actually make an artistic vision that I'm pleased with that I want to show people, mm-hmm. could easily spend several hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and but when? When? Uh, when I have the money? <laughs> no, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> You'll never have the money. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish you will, but I'm saying say when and then reverse engineer. Right. So let's say fifty. By the time you're fifty, Dan, that's ten years. 
10 years. That's right. I want to do it in 10 years. Okay, there you go. Start with working you towards that. So now I just got to make $100,000 in 10 years. I think that's doable. Break it down by a month. Uh, we, well, I mean, my more immediate goals is to to grow the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we, you know, we've got different benchmarks of listenership. That's 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 more of the main focus. That's more that that's a back burner. I consider it more of a of a of a dream of like when I'm finished bu- building mm-hmm. the business with Kyle. Okay. There's where the equity is. The audience that will push your your musical. Yeah, and now we have a reason to do it. <laughs> yeah. What's the musical about? I want to know this. A smart investor. <laughs> <laughs> When I woke up this morning, I did not imagine myself pitching a musical on this podcast. <laughs> I actually, I actually really, really want to do a musical uh, that's like a parody of comic book movies, where the characters are are singing about their character archetypes, and I really want to have the damsel in distress trying to become the protagonist. So that's really the heart of the musical. I want to want to tell that sounds pretty good to me but remember you just can't sing your feelings that that makes me angry <laughs> that makes me yeah i i lost you there yeah uh, yeah yeah that, I, I guess that's not big in israel <laughs> oh super nerdy reference good job let's get back good job. let's get back to some stuff uh that we can pick shlomo's brain about here i want to know more about israel itself like what's it like living there so israel is a pretty um it's it's a western country mm-hmm. and it's very expensive uh, this is why when we travel, it's always cheaper. So that's a good thing. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or almost always cheaper. It's pretty... So now it's summertime. It's pretty much uh, ma- nice weather, or let's say sunny, mm-hmm. for like nine months or even nine and a half months a year. It's, it's always mild weather. Oh. So when we have... A, a, when there is a, a snow snowstorm coming, uh, which is a which is very little snow. It's like the whole country is like, oh, it's going to snow. Is it going to snow? It's not going to snow. What's going to happen <laughs> in Jerusalem? So the, the, it's like it's 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 like that for a few days before that. Um, so it's a it's a whole it's a whole thing. Let's say this. Uh, but for others, like in the eastern coast, it will be like, huh? What is that? <laughs> so yeah. So we're very excited about very little bit of snow uh, because it's uh, sunny and warm here throughout the year yeah it, it's get it doesn't get that cold does it get that hot it's, it's, like i always thought uh i always thought middle east was like you know desert like that's always what i picture in my mind yeah half was half of israel is pretty green mm. but um temperature i can't do fahrenheit do you want to do celsius oh that's fine you can do We're, celsius yeah times nine divided by five plus 32 yeah uh, I will do it. Uh, <laughs> Snap your fingers and it's done. So let's say now we are at uh, the mark of thirty to thirty-five degrees. Okay, that's pretty warm still. Summertime, and it gets even warmer sometimes. That's eighty-six to ninety-five for you Fahrenheit freaks. Um, and in the winter, well, depends where. Of course, where it's snow, it's it's below zero. But let's say where we live, mm-hmm. uh, Israel is a tiny place, by the way. Okay. Driving for twen- more than 20 minutes counts as so far. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do people even have cars or most people walk? No, no, no. They have cars. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. Part of the. So it's not like the, the city in like New York where you can get away with not having one. So around Tel Aviv, so people, you know, uh, live there and I imagine many of them don't have cars, but uh, we live in a small town midway between Haifa and Tel Aviv on the coastline. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we need a car. We need a car to go around. There's some public transportation, but of course, it's not as efficient as in the middle of the city. Where is the most different place that you and your family have um, stayed at uh, compared to where you're at now? Um, I'd say um, Thailand or Sri Lanka. Uh, so in Sri Lanka, we've been there. We were there for three and a half months, mm-hmm. and uh, we traveled through the old uh, throughout. The whole island. Uh, we spend time there. Let's say a month, maybe even a little more. At one place, we sent our our daughter then to a local kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a very nice and positive experience. Uh, throughout, afterwards, through the traveling, we met some more local families. Even towards the end of our trip, 
uh, we celebrated with them their New Year's, so their local mm. New Year's, which is in the uh, 12th or 13th of April. That was an amazing experience, just mm. being there. And everything is, of course, different uh, from what we know. So everything is interesting. It's the same experience that we had when we lived in China. So we lived there for, we lived in Beijing for three years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is what I love about these places. So every day is kind of interesting. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's a surprise what's going to happen. And I, I, I like this feeling. Uh, some people hate it. I understand why. But for me, it's it's there's novelty there. So yeah, why not? I think uh, having the home base makes a big difference. Having a place that you still can go home and call home. I know of many people that don't have it. Yeah. All the digital nomads don't have it. Uh, and and they're okay with it. Although sometimes you see posts of people saying, okay, I traveled for several years. I'm ready to have some kind of a base. But it doesn't mean that they're going to stay there for long. Maybe right, a, a right. couple of months and then keep traveling. But they'll still maybe have a place where they come back to. How many languages do your children speak? So fluently English and Hebrew. Mm-hmm. And uh, my daughter uh, learns Spanish. And uh, when we were in Sri Lanka, we went to a few language lessons there. When we were in Bulgaria, she had a, a lesson there. And we were in, in Spain. Uh, uh, we, she took a few lessons there. So, of course, she's not speaking it, but she's kind of open to learn new languages and, and hearing about them. I imagine mm-hmm. going to kindergarten in Sri Lanka is definitely pick up a few phrases. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yes, yeah, so I took her. To, I took her. Uh, we went together because I also wanted to learn some uh, to a, a, a private tutor. We went together. Uh, I still remember a few of the, the color colors names. That's what I remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they taught us some animals and some color names. Uh, what else? What there? Oh, and uh, we learned the alphabet. We have a few uh, uh, workbooks in, in, <laughs> at home. Uh, I, I was actually just in Bulgaria speaking at a conference about a month and a half ago. So I also brought her uh, a, a workbook for learning uh, Bulgarian letters. Mm-hmm. So and, and she likes it. Uh, just just knowing about these things and uh, trying them out, even if she'll never speak fluent Bulgarian or uh, Singhala, which is what they speak in Sri Lanka. That's okay. Yeah. Do, do the kids enjoy it, or is it tough on them to to be moving? Like. Does it make it hard to make new friends or do they, I guess with the digital age now, it's very easy to keep in touch with those people. But So um, the fourth birthday of my daughter, she asked to do at the airport. Mm-hmm. So we brought all our family to the airport <laughs> in Israel, we took the train there, we, we bought everybody coffee, we brought a cake, we had some uh, balloons there. So she loves traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, being said that, having said that, um she has a few friends that uh you know from around the world and uh, mm-hmm. specifically even her best friend she she considers best friend is uh traveling but she she mentions him and uh, whenever they visit in Israel we meet uh so it really depends now that we are for uh, um pretty much not very long but pretty long time here so she has friends here that she knows and, and that's okay so it, it always changing let's say this mm-hmm. I was just thinking about like when I was a kid, like it was before Facebook. So I can't imagine like trying to keep track of people that I've met like throughout the course of the moving around. Cause uh, my dad was in the air force. So mm-hmm. moved around a little bit as a kid. And oh. It's probably a lot easier these days than it was then. It's definitely a lot easier. I just, the other day, there is a, a g- digital nomad uh, membership community that I'm part of. And we had <clears throat> a kind of a, a meeting with kids, digital nomad kids. So one mm-hmm. was traveling for like 10 years and now they're in Albania uh, and they keep moving around with their parents. I don't remember if it's two or three kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it works. It works. <laughs> All right, I got one last Israel question I want to ask you about. Go for it. Is the Mossad really as scary as uh, everyone makes them out to be? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever crossed paths with any of them? Uh, the, the answer would be I don't know. Oh, okay, good, good answer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really don't know. Tell us uh, more about where people can learn about the lifestyle, uh, the digital nomad lifestyle, or where they can check out your your mentoring programs, coaching programs. 
Yeah, sure. So you can go to my website, that, my website that's freefinancialself.com. And I also prepared for the listeners uh, a worksheet so they can start working on their finances and start tracking those. Uh, so you have their cash flow and net worth. Uh, how to? It explains exactly how to do that. Mm. And that's, that tool is at freefinancialself.com slash bulls. So B-U-L-L-S. We'll make sure we put that link in the episode description so everybody can find that. And also social media. Uh, it's either my name or Free Financial Self or on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube channel, Free Financial Self. Twitter is my name. Oh, nice. So yeah, all those. I can send you the links afterwards. Uh, perfect. All right. Anything else we need to cover, Dan? Um... <laughs> More questions about uh, digital nomads? Yeah. Ah man, I could probably spend all day doing that, but uh, we can do another episode for d- digital nomad investors or something, like right? That. <laughs> or or your uh, or your musical? The mu- uh, yes, we'll have to get you involved in that. <laughs> Smart investor, <laughs> right? <laughs> all right, Dad, you wanna you wanna wrap us up? All right, folks, thanks for sticking around to the end. I I had a good time, learned a bit. I hope you did too. Special thanks to Shlomo Freund for coming here to the shop. Thank you again, Shlomo. It's been a great time. It was great. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to close up shop. We'll be back at you soon. Another exciting, adventurous time. But until then, happy trades. Bye. Happy trades. Bye-bye. <laughs> Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks and the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades. Have you noticed changes in the places and spaces around you? What does a 15-minute city look like? How are companies preparing for life in the metaverse? Check out Changing Places, a podcast that explores the future of our built environments. Join me, Miriam Sobe, in deep dive conversations with experts who are working to make spaces better amid changing ideas, trends, and social issues. Follow Changing Places wherever you get your podcasts.